thank you so much for coming out this morning. And I also would like to acknowledge that this partnership is not just DSLBD. We're doing this with MWA, the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. So let's give a great round of applause for our partners, MWA. Thank you all so much. We have tons of information for you. Come out this morning to learn about exactly how do you use your CBE designation to garner opportunities. Today, we're focusing on those opportunities with EMWA, and we're going to talk about that. We have some great speakers, some good information. Let me just give you an overview of the agenda. I know you guys probably wanted to get a little something in your stomachs and kind of overlook the agenda that we have posted out for you. We're going to have the presentations coming up. We're going to talk about opportunities. We're going to do a little things a little differently today because we have a special guest that's going to be joining us, the mayor of the District of Columbia. Woo! <laughs> so she's going to be joining us a little later this morning. But we're going to have Terry Woodson from the Supplier Diversity Division at MWA to come up and give you an introduction and overview of the Supplier Diversity Division and also her team members that are going to present. We're going to talk about IT opportunities first. We're going to talk about procurement and then we're going to go into the certification. And you're probably saying, well, Patricia, why are we doing it this way? Well, because the carrot is in the certification process. So, and you guys are going to absolutely love this. And then thereafter, we're going to have the partnership ceremony where we're going to have the mayor as well as the leadership of EMWA come in and sign our agreement, and we're just going to celebrate this day. So at this time, what I would like to do is to say, first, thank you to a CBE firm, Dutch Mill Catering, for providing our breakfast for us this morning. Thank you, Dutch Mill. And also, I would like to acknowledge a number of CBEs that are in the process of completing our CEO Growth Academy. These firms actually went through like a mini executive MBA program. What we're doing here with that program is that we're helping them to build capacity to go to the next level. Actually, we're doing that with a number of industry sectors, but we wanted to focus on real estate and construction because we see so much construction going on in the region and also in the district. So I am going to ask the participants of DSLBD's CEO Growth Academy to stand. I want you guys to see these individuals. Come on, Dinesh. Come on, every Come on, Beverly Stan. Thank you. All right. These guys have been working for months to grow and build their business. And I will also share with you, the mayor may share this point as well. They have, since they've participated in our program, together as 15 firms, they've garnered 12 point. $2 million in procurement. So that is totally, totally awesome. So now that lets you guys know when we partner and when we do things, we are going to be successful. So that's why we're here with EMWA. So I am going to ask Terry Woodson. She is the assistant manager for outreach for EMWA to come up and speak with you. Terry? Thank you. You're welcome. Patricia has become my new sister. <laughs> Good morning. Today, this beautiful morning, is about an opportunity to introduce a joint certification program launch and outreach. This outreach event is a collaboration of thoughts and ideas between the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority and the Department of so, uh, through the Department of Supplier Diversity, which is our department, and the DC Department of Small and Local Business Development. This initiative has been designed for both MWA and DSLBD to learn how best to engage more DC-based businesses to become certified as LDBEs, or Local Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. As Local Business Enterprise, these DC-based businesses will be able to pursue work with both of our airports, Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport and Washington Dulles International Airport. And it's not our airport, it's your airport. Both airports provide opportunities at both the prime 
and the subcontractor levels in areas such as engineering and design, construction, services. We have IT, support, consulting, custodial, security, environmental, landscaping, snow removal, equipment, maintenance, waste removal, recycling, and more. Under the goods, light bulbs, equipment, parts, office supplies, furniture, heavy equipment, autos, other vehicles, and more, much more. At many of these types of outreach events, we like to market the authority as operating like a small city. Anything that a small city needs to function, we can procure or purchase. Director Anna Harvey and her team at DSLBD have the foresight to understand that the CBEs have needs. You all have needs. Needs translates into opportunities, opportunities into dollars, dollars into revenue, growth, potential, and wealth for small local businesses that are being developed. MWA and DSLBD have worked in collaboration to bring the CBEs to the table. And now we are listening and we're paying attention as to how best to keep you there. We want to build capacity in our current database of LDBEs. Therefore, one solution that has been designed is a much more seamless process for the CBEs to become certified. This process would be covered in a more detailed scenario when Julian Center, who is head of our certification, does his presentation. Other presentations today uh, will be Gotham Kundu. He's vice president and chief information officer. And it's a coup to get him out today. We really are very pleased to have him with us. And Liz Bryan and Kathy Rule will co-manage their manager and deputy manager of procurement and contracts. We encourage you to stay for the ceremonial portion, as Patricia mentioned, of this program. And that is the signing of the pledge between DC Mayor Muriel Bowser and MWAS President and CEO John E. Potter. Because the pledge will be read out loud, I will not divulge any of the language. I know you're all happy about that, huh? <laughs> Allow me to take a moment to acknowledge some of the MWA board members. Uh, I have not seen them come in yet, but I know that they're coming. And they're very committed to this initiative. And when they get here, I'm sure you're going to want to be able to have some type of conversation with them. DC board members Warner E. Session. Vice Chair Barbara Lang, who has said that she will be here this morning, and Thorne Posen. Also attending today from MWA, again, not here yet, but coming, is our President and Chief Executive Officer, John E. Potter. And with us in the front row, Jerome L. Davis, who is our Executive Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer. Stephen C. Baker, David Mode, Julian Center, and me are all members of Jerome's revenue team. Mark Adams, who's here, Liz Bryan, Kathy Rule, Lydia Gray are all members of the finance, procurement, and contracts team. Greg Woolert is going to represent from engineering. Gotham Kundu, Vice President and Chief Information Officer, will also be a presenter, as you've been told. And he's here with us. And then lastly, we have John Jackson, Manager of Materials and Management. Right? OK. We, I'm sorry? Oh. Oh, how can I forget Paul? I've been trying to get a ride for him all week. Paul, Mal <laughs> Paul Malandrino, who is head of the airport operations, air airports and operations. Correct? OK. We'd like to thank uh, Mayor Miriam Bowser, Director Anna Harvey, 
and all of the DSLBD support staff who have hosted us here today and have pro provided this platform, this venue, and this lovely audience for this outreach event. I'd like to end this uh, by a quote from one of my favorites who has passed away, a uh, great newscaster, Walter Cronkite. And he said, I can't imagine a person becoming a success who doesn't give this game of life everything that he or she's got. Thank you all. Enjoy the morning. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Julian, uh, Julian Center. Gotham? OK, I'll let you do that. You have Gotham's? OK. We're going to have, we're gonna have Gotham to come up and be the first presenter. And we have a, a very short bio, but let, let's get this underway. Thank you all. Good. Good morning. Um, as you can, my name is Gautam Kundu. Uh, I'm the Chief Information Officer for uh, the Metropolitan Washington Airport Authority. Uh, again, thank you for this opportunity for uh, having us come here. And uh, they don't take the IT guys out very often, so when they do, I don't feel like leaving the stage, so <laughs> I'm going to take this time and talk to you a little bit about what's going on in IT and technology, and thank you. <laughs> if you could get started, a little bit about us. Uh, the Office of Technology supports our business partners. We help uh, build all aspects of you know, uh, the technology that is required to support our business partners, applications, the infrastructure, the innovation. So that's what we do. If they are happy, we are happy. So we always make sure that our business partners are happy. <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> so let me give you a little bit of the roadmap. Um, I'm pretty new to the organization. I've been here about two years now. Um, we've got a three-prong strategy here. Very briefly, it's going to take me a couple of hours to get, walk you through this, but I'll give you the highlights. Uh, the first thing we're going to be focusing on at the authority is to standardize and stabilize and innovate. Those are the three things. So let me start off with uh, what stabilize is. We've got a lot of infrastructure. We've got a lot of needs to keep them updated. We've got a lot of systems, networks, data centers, infrastructure. So we're going to spend a lot of time and energy that's going to be focusing on making sure that what we have and what we support has the redundancy, has the scalability, has the need for us to support our business functions. As we do that, we're going to move to our second prong, and this is all going to happen simultaneously, is to find ways to standardize our, our infrastructure, our applications. So we do have, a, as you probably know, a large footprint. We are in two airports. We support a toll road system. Um, so there is a lot of uh, you know, synergies between this, and there's also some specialization between our lines of business. So as we consolidate our footprint, we're going to find ways to um, standardize, standardize on the infrastructure, standardize on the applications, and makes it easier for all of us to support what we have. In the process, then this is the most exciting part, and that's, I like what you call me, the cool guy comes in here. And this is what I've been saving the best for the last, is the innovation part. Uh, as you probably know, we are in a very fast-paced consumer uh, technology industry. Our passengers demand mobile applications to work with some of the features that they used to when they go to, let's say, retail shops like Amazon or they go to Best Buy. So they always expect a mobile phone to work, the latest apps, they need geo-tracking, they need a lot of innovation, real-time information, accurate information, flight arrivals, baggage, all, all the things that we talk about when you travel, when all of us travel, we need that at our fingertips. So we're going to be work, working and investing in a lot of our energy in figuring out what is it that we can do to align and make the travel journey of a passenger seamless. And that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about technologies like mobile, which I talked to you about. We're going to be talking and building things around analytics, business analytics. We're going to be investing on a lot of uh, geotagging, which is like being able to tell you uh, anything in the airport, where to go from point A to point B, or where you've parked your car. Uh, so those kind of things, a lot of things that's going to come together in terms of making the passenger journey a lot more seamless. Of, and that's, that's what is business innovation. So with that, uh, let me give you a, just a highlights of four programs that you'll see a lot of procurement activities come out. Number one, infrastructure. 
as you probably know, we've got a lot of work around infrastructure modernization. Um, you'll see we've got a lot of activities around data center consolidation, network convergence, uh, associated with uh, a lot of the technical things that you'll hear about uh, is around infrastructure modernization. The second category we're going to be focusing on is the passenger-centric technologies, things around mobile apps, things around web design. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, building um, display signs, uh, unification of display signs. So a lot of that is run in that bucket of what we call passenger-centric technologies. We do have a need, again, an operational need to keep our public safety systems interoperable with our county partners. There's going to be a lot of investments in that area. 911 is a classic example of how we need to make sure that we are uh, absolutely, there's a very mission critical systems in this, this bucket. So we're going to work on those fronts. And finally, there is a lot of work that we're going to be doing in terms of modernization of our business systems. Our, uh, these are the back end systems. Our, uh, Supplier diversity program, the ones that you folks will be interested in, you know, modernizing that. There's some work that's being done on our core back end systems, like our human resources, capital management system. Uh, so these are the financial systems. So there'll be a lot of work in that area. So uh, with that, I'll kind of uh, just give you a very high level work, what, what the next few years are going to look like for the authority in these four buckets. Um, let's talk of the next steps. Uh, I think we should. Uh, very actively, I would highly encourage all of you to engage with our uh, LDB office, get registered with us. I think that's a great first step. I'll do that. And then uh, we are working with uh, our office uh, of contracting and supplier diversity. To, we're planning for a deeper dive in the area of technology. And we will be working with, uh, with, with our uh, partners here to have a dedicated day just to talk about technology and all the initiatives that we are working on so we can spend more time on the cool stuff. So that's going to be done in 2016. Uh, uh, that's, that's all I had. You were, uh, let me uh, I will pass it on to Liz. If, uh, let me introduce Liz. Uh, Liz Bryan is our contracting and procurement manager. Liz joined the authority in March of 2013. Uh, Liz got 30 years of experience in public transportation in the areas of engineering and uh, procurement and contracts. She has got a fantastic background and uh, she's, an, she's an engineer by profession who's also got a CPA. And let me get this right, certified public procurement officer, <laughs> CPPR. <laughs> Great, so let, with that, let's welcome Liz, thank you. Thank you, and good morning. It's great to be here. Um, I, I also want to extend my congratulations to the 15 CEO Growth Academy participants. I was privileged to be a presenter on construction accounting for them, so that, it's great having you here. This morning, I'm going to share the stage with my deputy, Kathy Rule. She's going to walk us through the first part of how to do business with MWA. It is very important we are committed to joining forces so the CBE can leverage their certification and become LDBs at um, MWA. Our objective today, the Procurement and Contracts Department objective today, is to make sure that at the end of this presentation, you are armed with the information of how to do business with us. And not only how to do business, but to be successful and have as many contracting opportunities as there is. Gotham, I'm excited. You know I am, because I have a passion about procurement, about having, in 2016, a technology industry day. That will be fantastic. OK, Kathy, we're going to start with Kathy Rule. She's my deputy. She has been at MWA since she was a child. So she'll introduce herself. OK, and then I'll pick up with really how to do an effective proposal. All we're giving you today are trade secrets, so make sure that you take notes, because this is going to result in successful contracting opportunities. Thank you, Liz. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure being here with you today. 
Uh, I look forward to talking to you um, a little bit about, first of all, our history of the airport's authority. Um, we not only operate two airports, Reagan National and Washington Dulles International, but we're also multifaceted in that we also have the Dulles Toll Road that we operate and maintain, and we also have the construction of the Dulles rail project, which is the Silver Line, which I'm sure all of you have heard about uh, bits and pieces of. Um, so basically, back in 1987, um, actually June 7th, 1987, we became the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. Prior to that, we were the Federal Aviation Administration as part of DOT. So they transferred us to the MWA, the Airports Authority, to operate and maintain the two airports. Since then, November 1st, 2008, is when we took over the toll road, and then in 2014, we're now completing, we completed the first phase of the Metro Rail project, which is two phases. So in July of 2014, the first phase was completed and services operating. And then now we're working on phase two with the construction going all the way out to Loudoun County. So that's a little history of where we were and where we're going, okay? So next, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our procurement policies. Um, we do have a contracting manual that is available on our website. It is the fourth edition, Revision 2, that was adopted by our Board of Directors June 1, 2015. Um, so the Airports Authority is committed to the maximum competition out there. Um, that is our goal. As procurement professionals, we ensure the use of sound contracting methods are carried out with the utmost integrity and ethical conduct. All right? So basically, that's our policy, is to have the maximum extent possible of competition. A little bit about our procurement process um, with our solicitations. We advertise our solicitations on our website. I encourage you all to go there and, and get familiar with our website, because that's how you're going to get to know us a little bit better. Um, approximately two weeks after a solicitation is issued, we have a pre-proposal or pre-bid conference. With that conference, we invite everyone to come into the airport's authority for that particular solicitation. You have the technical person there, you have the procurement people there, you have DSD there to talk about the LDBE participation on that particular solicitation. We go through the requirements of that solicitation so that you have a better understanding of what we're expecting you to submit and how to submit your proposal to best suit your best needs. Um, with that, we also can have a site visit as part of that pre-proposal conference that gives you a better understanding of the intent of the solicitation and what we're looking for. Um, you can submit questions. You can ask us questions there about that, pre, you know, about the solicitation, any clarifications you need. So we encourage you to come in and visit us when we have those pre-proposal conferences. Um, if there's anything that needs to be changed, any terms and conditions, anything that, based on your questions that we receive that we feel we need to change, we will do that via an amendment to that solicitation. All right? So that's part of that process. Um, amendments are issued to people who are on the plan holders list. And let me just tell you a little bit about the plan holders list. So when you go to our website, you find that solicitation that you want to compete on, you download that solicitation, and you register for it. Once you register for that particular solicitation, your name becomes part of the plan holders list. That plan holders list is a great resource for you to use to network with other firms that um, you want to put the best team together with and um, just to, just to kind of work together. If you're a smaller company and you want a joint venture with someone, that gives you the idea of how each firm on that plan holders list is planning on participating for that particular solicitation. I think that's a great resource for everyone out there. So as part of being on the plan holders list, you will get notification of all amendments 
um, coming out for that particular solicitation, whether it's changing the due date for solicitate for the due date of the uh, proposals to be due or the bids to be opened or any changes within that solicitation, terms and conditions and that kind of thing. Then from that point, um, the due date is set. We receive proposals in by the procurement and contracts department. And um, some cases we ask for best and final offers, all right, if there's a need to do that. Those would also be issued by an amendment, all right? And then um, where, where there's a technical evaluation criteria involved um, in the process of selection, oral interviews uh, may be needed. And what we do then is once you are within the competitive range, we invite you to come in and discuss your proposal with us. And you're there to bring your key people in to show us why we should select you as the best selected firm to do this work for us, all right? So that's very important. It's your time to shine when we can't ask you to come in and have that oral presentation for us. All right, then a final selection is made and then we move on to contract award. So that's our procurement process, kind of in a nutshell, from issuing the solicitation all the way to award. So that's just very quickly. Some contracting opportunities, um, types of things, uh, I know, um, uh, I'm terrible with names, I just wanna let y'all know that, Terry. <laughs> My friend Terry, she mentioned a lot of the opportunities that we have, um, and she kind of said what I kind of say a lot of times is we're like a little city. We have everything we need to operate like a little city. So she mentioned some of the things that we have. I know a lot of you had an opportunity to pick up the um, the forecast that we have through the end of the year, that is a rolling forecast. It is also available on our website if you were not able to pick up a copy of it. So I would encourage you to look that over and if you have questions about that forecast, we're here to answer those for you. But just some of the professional services, we have legal, financial, audit services, as um, Terry mentioned. Um, we have architect engineering services for things that need to be designed throughout the, the multifaceted airports authority. We have construction services, as we talked about the Silver Line construction, which is a major thing. Um, we also have the terminal redevelopment coming up, which is a major construction project. It's a $4 million project that is anticipated, and it will have a 25% LDBE requirement for that. Lots and lots of goods and services. You, you, you heard Gotham talking about his initiatives for IT. He keeps us very, very busy in procurement. And um, we're more than helpful, more than willing to work with him to get what he needs done. Um, as, as Terry did say, she mentioned custodial, landscaping, all of those kinds of things that you can think of to run a little city as is what I refer us to. So I encourage all of you to look at the forecast and, and see what's on there that you know may interest you and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about those. In our simplified acquisition side, um, we have um, two offices, one at each airport that handles simplified acquisitions as well as the procurement and, cor and contracts corporate office. Um, our threshold is set at 150,000 and below. We're similar to the federal government now where their threshold for simplified is 150. That was recently increased um, from 50,000 to 150. So that's gonna bring a lot more efficiencies in our process for, um, for small businesses. Um, so that's, that's available to you. So moving on to some contract requirements. As part of our program, you must be certified prior to award of a contract for solicitations that have an LDBE requirement. So just remember that. You may submit a proposal or a bid and not currently be certified. The rule is that you need to be certified prior to award. So if you're in that process, which which with today we've made it very, you know, very seamless to do so. So you should be getting certified very quickly. But we need to have that certification done prior to an award of a contract. So if you're in the process, but you see an opportunity, and you say, oh man, I'm not quite um, certified yet. That's okay. You can still come in and submit a proposal or a bid, and we'll be evaluating that. Okay.
and we'll work with you on that. Um, you must obtain ins an insurance certificate. That's another important thing you need to note. Within each solicitation, we have insurance requirements. So just make sure you can meet those requirements and you have a correct insurance certificate when one is asked for. Another thing is bonding. Uh, bonding is required on construction contracts that we have. Um, and you, with an invitation for bid, we have a bid bond that is required. So just make sure you do understand those requirements and we'll be happy to work with you on those if you have any questions. We also require a payment and performance bond for those construction contracts as well. All right. The last thing I wanted to mention about contract require, contractor requirements is the requirement to hold a contractor's license. This is very important, and I know for, um, for coming to the airport's authority, um, some people maybe, maybe not realize, but both airports are located in Virginia, okay? Even though we have a DC address, they're both located in Virginia. We have Reagan National, who um, is located in Arlington County, and then we have Dulles. It's actually Fairfax County. So as a part of the Virginia law and doing business in Virginia uh, for construction, you must have a contractor's license. And we've provided the website there um, for you to go and 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 figure out what's required for that. So it is something that you must have um, to do work at the airports, okay? So just needed to let you know that. Moving on, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about solicitation types. These are the solicitation types that are generally used throughout the industry. Um, we have sealed, um, advertised sealed bids is the first one. Um, these are used when there is no anticipated need to enter into negotiations. Um, price is the only evaluation criteria. Um, we use this when we have clear um, specifications. Um, this is utilized with an invitation for bids. With an invitation for bids, we have public openings. So you're more than welcome to come in as the public. Um, they're held on Thursdays at 2 o'clock when bids are due and we go through that process of opening those bids publicly, okay? Um, so I encourage you all to do that if you're interested in doing that and coming to the airport's authority to the corporate office building is where, where we do those. The other one is request for qualifications. We use this for A&E design firms. When we're going out to design something, we ask for qualifications to be submitted, and, and that's that method. The other method is the competitive negotiated procurements, and we use an RFP, request for proposal, when we're issuing uh, a, a, a negotiated procurement. And this is when we have evaluation criteria that's in addition to price, where we would want to evaluate and rank your, your past performance, your qualifications of your personnel, the understanding of the requirement, and those kinds of things. And then they're ranked and then score, uh, ranked and evaluated, and then we come up with the, um, the best selection. Um, so those, that, those are the uh, topics. And then we have sole source is the last one. Wanted to mention sole source. This is another method that may be used when there is only one known or acceptable source for the item. Okay, we do have those. Justifications are required for a sole source, anything over $2,500. For sole source negotiated procurements in excess of 200,000, we publish the notice on the authority's website for 15 days, and then it maintains on the website for 30 days. And this is just to vet those kinds of things to make sure there isn't anyone out there who in fact can do it that we're not aware of. So when there is a sole source, it's posted on our website, and then if anyone has the same item that they can propose, then we take a look at that, um, that information and then make a decision on that, all right? Any sole source that is over 200,000 also gets approved by our board of directors, all right? 
So that, I went through that pretty quickly. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Liz. She's gonna touch on effective proposals, some common mistakes that we have found people make, and um, some interview techniques to help you improve on submission, okay? And then I'll come back up. <laughs> we have time. Hi, okay. So Kathy spoke to an invitation for bid. I don't need to see you, all I need is your bid. You don't have to be there when I open it. You don't have to respond to evaluation criteria. So when we have a competitive negotiated procurement, this is key because in our solicitation, we have identified evaluation factors or criteria that you must respond to. And in doing so, we review those from a technical perspective the cost perspective is separate, but before you can even get to the competitive range, you need to have a solid proposal. And so I am going to tell you for the past 30 years, the mistake I've seen, what are key elements that you need to respond to so that you can submit a successful proposal that move you to the next level, which is the competitive range. So let's talk about key to an effective proposal. First, first word, innovative. There are services out there that are common to everyone. You need to make sure that you read the scope of work and offer something that is not run of the mill. Be innovative about how you structure your proposal, how you present the information and also what you can do that's unique to your company that someone else is not going to think of or offer you. This is all about you. This is, so, thank you. This is all about you at this stage. So you have to represent your firm in the best light. First of all, before we even get innovative, you have to understand the requirement. So many people read that scope of work and miss the key elements of the scope of work. That's why we have a Q&A. If you do not understand something in the scope of work, it's more than likely that someone else do not understand. So it's important that you ask the question. When I'm in college, professor always said there's no stupid question, and I really believe that. So ask the question if you are not clear, so we can make an effort to go back to the technical team and said, hey, we've had several questions on this particular element. You need to make sure this is clear to the offers. Firm's capability to perform. If you don't have the experience, don't submit the proposal. Make sure your firm is capable of doing the work. And if you don't have that capability, Outsource that capability. If you really want to do or to gain some experience, do a joint venture, subcontract that work. We have your experience, your resources. The worst thing that can affect your bottom line, which is driven by your profit, is not having or thought about having the adequate resource to do that job. Because if you don't have the adequate resource, you're going to fall behind schedule. And there's something called liquidated damages, okay? <laughs> and this is where the owner assess you a dollar value for being late if it's not an excused delay. Ability to subcontract. Do what we're doing today. Have an outreach for your company. You can have it in your office so that you can attract subcontractors to come in and make sure that you're getting the best person for the job. This is how you build your proposal, your team, with your key experience. So I'm letting you know that's what we look for. Current and relevant references. Don't give me something 10 years ago that you know that person isn't there, okay? And before you put that person's name, Call that person, tell them, hey, MWA may be called reaching out to you. So try to get current information. Make sure that person have the correct telephone number and contact information. 
because we are going to, if you, especially if you're new to us, we're going to make sure that we make the best selection. I am here heading that office to make sure that MWA gets the best resource out there that's going to be successful in completing that job. If we're successful, you're going to be successful. Do the market research. Know your competition. Know what that other person is doing out there. In an IFB situation, you may have no interest in that IFB. It's a public opening. Come in, sit down, hear the prices, know your competition, do your market research. Oh my God, this is number one, a realistic cost estimate, okay? I spoke to the CEO Academy about past performance, collection of data, and cost in information. That's what you need to do. And I know we may be small, but you can actually develop a database that tracks your costs. Use that as your estimate. Go out to the Bureau of Labor Standards. See what is the um, producer's um, price index. Also, engage another small business that has that expertise in developing cost estimate. Because if you underbid the job or underprice your proposal, there goes your bottom line. Because guess what? Once I do a firm fixed price, unless there's something that I cost, I'm not going to really even modify the contract. So make sure you have a realistic estimate. And manage your proposal process. This is your firm, not mine. Don't let, no disrespect the secretary, do that last and final review. I have seen so many cut and paste. I am MWA, yet I'm getting somebody's um, name that I've never heard of. Manage the proposal process. Make sure you're communicating to me what you want me to know. Read, final review, sign, seal, and put in the mail. So those are some key elements, and those are things that the procurement office sees a lot. So I'm just telling you what I've seen to make sure that you have a better and, and more effective proposal. Now, these are the common mistakes. I just talked about one, cut and paste, right? You're recycling proposal. You don't even, I mean, if you don't invest the time, you don't expect the technical team to invest the time in reviewing. So make sure that your proposal is what you want me to have. Look at the information, your references. Make sure I'm not WMATA, I'm MWA, okay? <laughs> Common mistake. Outdated reference we talked about, right? Not gonna deliberate on that anymore. Inexperience, I talked about that. When we look at a joint venture, and you joint venture with another partner, if that partner has that experience, you also have that experience. So this is another way of gaining your own experience if you don't have it, is to joint venture. And if you are inexperienced as a prime, make sure you have your subcontractors that are very well versed and experienced in that line of work to supplement your team. Unorganized presentation. You come to presentation, you're looking fine. But then we start asking oral questions, and I don't see that synergy between the team. I don't see the handoff that is required to communicate to the technical team that, hey, this team has it going on. This is who I want to work for me. We're fumbling. Um, the presentation is not in the right order, the, 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 the hands out, you know, are not correct. We have different people with different names speaking. You have to control that process. This is all about you. And pricing is not reflective. This is when the contract team look at the proposal, the cost proposal, and say, wait a minute, we're kind of off here because their competition, your other competitors that have presented a proposal, you're way off as far as cost is concerned. So that's why it is so important to do a good 
independent cost estimate. And of course, anything else that you would want us to be, make sure when you come in, you are talking about what is relevant. What is the scope of work? What did MWA put in their solicitation that I need to address? Make sure you're responding to each and every evaluation criteria that we ask. Answer the question. Don't take me around a barn, and then at the end of the day, you said nothing. That is important. And of course, this is it, effective oral interview techniques. Before you even get to me, you should have rehearsed. Everyone should have a clear role. Okay, Gotham introduced me, I introduced Kathy. We're passing it on. That's how you want it to flow. Then I can see that synergy. It's important for me. The reason we have oral presentation, one, we can ask any clarification questions that we may have had that we did not ask for response before you got to the oral presentation. Secondly, I look for the synergy. I look for how the team is communicating to the technical team. That's important. So make sure everyone has a clear role. You're the owner of the company. You may not necessarily be the, fir the, the front person. You may have your project manager doing that but he should have rehearsed. You should have timed yourself, because if I say 30 minutes, I mean 30 minutes, and I don't care where you are in your presentation. Your 30 minutes is up, okay? So we talked about your project manager, who is gonna lead the team. Work all of that out before you come. If you find something in the scope of work that you think can be done better, this is it. Make your recommendations you are going to separate yourself from the other team. So make sure that if there's something out there that we haven't even heard about, because we may not be out in the market, the technical team, make sure you said, hey, you know, I, I, I can do what you're asking me to do, but this is what's happening out in the marketplace now. And this is what I'm recommending, and this is how it will work, okay? And this, I think, will benefit you as an organization. And of course, lastly, be prepared to address whatever information, questions we have. Make sure you're well versed in what your solicitation or your technical proposal state. Because believe me, they are reading it. So after reading, if there is anything that they are not unclear about, they are going to ask you. So make sure you know what's in your proposal, OK? And we always ask, what are the challenges to your company, especially being a small company? Be prepared to speak to that. And if, if you do have challenges, you should offer how you have overcome those challenges. So we can know that you're proactive. You've been doing this business for a while and you take what we're asking you to do very seriously, okay? So, I mean, I, I, I think that's really the trade secrets. Uh, I hope that was very helpful because this is what most organization that goes out with a competitive proposal, um, especially asking you to respond to criteria, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a solid proposal that will be successful for your firm so we can move you to the next level and so you can be successful when we do make that final decision. All right, Kathy's going to give some resources. We're keeping our eyes on the time, and I think we're going to be earlier than anticipated, but she's going to take just a few minutes. If anyone needs this presentation, um, we will definitely upload it on our website so you can have it, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. I just want to take you through some of the um, some of the sources for procurement information. Just kind of walk you through some of the pages on our website just to get you a little bit more familiar with what you're going to be finding when you go there, all right? This is where you're going to find all of our contracting opportunities. Um, the, the first page, uh, you can go ahead, Lydia, um, is, is the view. This is a snapshot of what you're going to see when you go to our website for contracting opportunities, okay? 
Um, the next one is upcoming opportunities. These are tabs within the website that you're gonna find. So upcoming opportunities list all solicitations in the near future. Um, we do have a, a future tab where you can find that quarterly report that, you, that we handed out earlier to you. Uh, just wanna make sure you know where to find that. So that would be on upcoming opportunities tab. We have another tab for current opportunities. All right, those are all active solicitations that we have currently. You can download those and register, as I talked about being a plan holder um, for that particular solicitation. Um, and as I said, you know, that's a great resource to find, as Liz said, subcontractors being a joint venture, getting that best team together for you to be successful. So that's where that uh, you can find those. Um, the other thing I wanted to just touch on briefly with you is a newsletter that we have available. Um, it's called Project E Alert. Okay, it's a little E and alert, as you see there. We have about 20,000 subscribers to this database. And what it is, it's a, a newsletter that goes out every other week or so, and it kind of gives you an email that just says, hey, we're out there, come visit us, you know. Take a peruse of what's available in that email. If you see something, you can click on it. It'll take you right to our website, and then you can start reading about it. So it's just a little tickler for everyone to remember, hey, the airports are out there looking for people to come work with us, all right? So just wanted to touch on that. Um, with that, we just have, I just, and those little cards that were on the back table gives you information and addresses, email addresses about all of our different offices. But I did want to quickly just say that we have four office locations for procurement and contracts. We have the main office at the corporate office building at Reagan National. We have a simplified uh, office at Reagan. We have a simplified office at Dulles. Like I said, that's 150 and below. They handle those actions. And then we also have the Dulles Corridor Metro Rail office, okay? And on the, that card in the back was all of those um, addresses and information. So in the main office, we handle everything, all goods and services, handles the Dulles Toll Road that involves everything in excess of 150,000, plus all construction regardless of cost. That's our address there, our main phone number, Liz's name, my name, just so that you have it handy for you. The simplified office at Reagan National, like I said, again, handles everything below 150. They're in the Terminal A, uh, um, at Reagan National, right in room 278. If you wanna go visit, please feel free, give them a call. Sue Kripe is the procurement uh, supervisor there. She'd be more than happy to talk to you about other opportunities. Same with Dulles, uh, Vicki Smith is the purchasing supervisor there. That's her phone number, and they're located at Dulles Airport. For the Metro Rail project, uh, uh, they're located out in Herndon. Uh, Virginia. Uh, Liz is, is currently uh, handling that out there as well. She's a very busy lady, keeps everybody straight. Um, so she's handling things at the rail office for right now. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank you for your time this morning. And uh, I believe we're going to turn it over to um, Julian, uh, Julian Center, who's going to come up and speak with you in regards to the certification process. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. I'm just going to introduce Julian. Um, for, for very small LDB um, CB firms, I think an ideal opportunity is our simplified acquisition. It's $150,000 and below. So this would be a great opportunity for those who want to really get your feet wet um, with how to do business with us. Um, um, yeah, Q&A. Yes, we do have Q&A. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, all righty. Yeah. Just to clarify, 
Um, I think that's what today is about. You have to be certified by MWA. So I think this today's um, momentous occasion is to leverage your CBE information to become certified LDBs. Did you want to expand on that, Patricia? Thank you so much for your question. What we're going to do, we can answer your question after Julian Center does his presentation and we can give you a little more detail. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna introduce Julian because this is where it's important. This is the LDB certification. And Julian Center joined the Airports Authority in June 2014. Um, he came from Maryland Department of Transportation, MB program. Um, he endeavors in his career, or it includes works such as computer system analyst, legal practitioner, and an adjunct professor. Go ahead, Julian. Uh, <laughs> his present responsibilities include the certification of the local disadvantaged um, business enterprise, you know, LDB, um, and uh, at an airport's concession. Um, that's another piece that we did not mention, that we do have airport's concession, but that's under the federal auspice, which is the ACDB program, if any of you are DB program. So um, please join me in welcoming Julian and hope he gives you detailed information. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's nice to uh, address you. I believe that I'm here to give you some kind of uh, uh, assurance that this is not going to be painful. <laughs> Certification uh, with us thanks to the Department of uh, Small and Local Business Development, uh, has made this more of a streamlined process. So if you've been through the vetting uh, for your CBE, this is no more than just a registration with us. Uh, we have our own process for those who may come in and, and, and apply for uh, LDBE certification. But uh, because you're coming uh, from the Department of Small and Local Business Development, uh, we've decided uh, through discussions and, and working out with, uh, with this organization that it's, it's just more or less registering and telling us a little bit about you. Uh, in preparations for this presentation, I thought it would be good to give you a little history about the LDBE program. Uh, believe it or not, this program was started in 1989, and the purpose was really to encourage small businesses, well, minority uh, business enterprises and women business enterprises to participate in our procurement uh, uh, activities and opportunities with the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. Um, well, my department, uh, the Department of Small, I mean, the Department of Supply and, and uh, Diversity, um, we deal with two different programs. One is a federally funded program where we're dealing with the DBE and the ACDBE. Of course, those of you who know anything about the uh, disadvantaged business enterprise and the airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise know that we go through a rigorous uh, inspection of your company. We require a tremendous amount of documentation from you to make sure that you are who you say you are. But here in the uh, local um, LDBE program, uh, uh, we're in fact not going to require you to submit any kind of additional information other than the application. Now, um, our, our purpose here is really to talk about the uh, small, um, uh, the LDB certification requirements. Well, this program is a non-race or gender program. We don't require you to be minority. We don't require you to be female. We just require you to be small. Um, and by saying local, we also are talking about that you have to be within a 100-mile radius 
of the zero mile marker in DC. I put a, a picture of that mile marker <laughs> up there because most people do not believe that there is such a thing. But as you can see, well, you can't see it very clear there, but it's uh, right across the street from the White House. And it's a stone block, and there we measure outward 100 miles in all directions, 360 degrees. Now, one of the requirements of the uh, LDBE program is that you meet a size standard. Now, the size standard that we have, we average it over a three-year period, you cannot exceed $23.98 million in annual gross revenue. 23.98. I hope most of you will fit in that. And I, I, I believe that uh, maybe some of you may not, but uh, we encourage you that if you are below that standard, so please apply. Um, our LDBE program, as I said earlier, is we, we have we developed it to be a streamlined process uh, because of the, uh, the your, your Department of uh, Small and Local De uh, Business Development. The application requires no more than just basic information about you and your company. We ask that you provide us with what type of legal structure you are partnership, LLC, or corporation. Or you may even be a sole proprietor. But just identify what kind of legal structure you're operating under. We ask you to tell us what type of work you perform. Um, and we also ask you to list the kind of uh, industry that you're working under. Now, we use the, the, the uh, national um, American, uh, um, I, I should um, sh write the NAITS codes, but I, I don't like to use the acronyms that much. I like to spell it out for you. The North American Industry Classification System. And we, call, we use that, um, that acronym NAITS codes. We ask you to list the NAITS codes that you're working under. And the reason why we ask you to list those is because it's much easier for us to provide you with notice of solicitations that we have. If we look at the NAITS codes, and this is what we're going to be asking for, it's easier to send you out something that will alert you immediately that this, in fact, opportunity is going to exist. Uh, we ask you to give, you, uh, give us a um, general description of your firm. We ask about past performances, and we also ask about who your owners. Who, are, who is the owner or who are the owners of your co uh, company? We also provide you with an affidavit. We ask you to sign and have that uh, uh, affidavit no notarized. Uh, and the purpose is that it's an oath that the information that you supplied is true and correct, and its information, MWA, can rely upon as to the size of your corporation or your company, the location of your company, uh, its operation, and its ownership. Um, once you're certified through this particular process, you're certified for three years. We won't, we won't well, hopefully we will talk to you through the procurement or whatever um, that you're seeking opportunities for. But we, as the certification unit, will not ask you for anything until that three years is up. We'll give you notice that it's coming up if you don't keep up with it. 90 days, 60 days, 30 days. And then, when in fact, we will certify you again for another three years. Well. There's an application up there. <laughs> and that application is the simplified uh, application that we're going to ask you to fill out. I've just told you basically the things that we're going to be asking for in that application. We're not asking you to submit your operating agreements or your shareholders' agreements, nothing like that. This is more or less or less like a registration thanks to your organization here in D.C. 
Well, that's about all I have to say, and uh, we are going to encourage you to ask questions. There's a microphone here, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to come up so everyone in the audience can hear your question, and the team that has presented before will be here to answer any question. Of course, uh, I don't expect for you to ask me very many questions because I've, I've told you everything that you need. But should you have additional questions, I'll be here too. Thank you so much for your time and your patience. Hi, thank you so much for your presentation uh, this morning. Uh, I'm with HRGM Corporation. We're a local business here in Washington. We've been here for 37 years. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of government work. Pretty much 99% of our work is government. So I just want to understand from a construction perspective, is, are all the projects Davis-Bacon? Um, and do you have any local resident worker requirements? Um, to answer your question, the only time we require Davis-Bacon is when we're using federal assisted um, funds. Majority of our programs, if we're not using federal assisted, which could be the FTA or the FAA, uh, um, more than likely will be local disadvantaged business. So we're required for anyone who does not know about the Davis-Bacon, um, any federal assisted projects that construction is in excess of $2,000 needs to have the Davis-Bacon wage rates, meaning that you cannot pay less than that. So to, the answer to your question is no, not everything is Davis-Bacon. Hi, um, thank you for the presentation. I'm Diana Owen with the Justin Company, and um, we are a CBE drywall contractor. And um, I was curious about MWA's reciprocity programs with, or I guess reciprocity with MDOT and possibly WMATA. Does that reciprocity still exist for those certifications? And then I also was wondering how that works with the, the CBE and MWA partnership. Professor will answer that. <laughs> Thank you. Interesting that you should ask about uh, reciprocity. The LDBE program is MWA's program, just solely MWA. We do not have reciprocity with anyone. Uh, if you were um, a DBE or ACDBE and you were in another jurisdiction, there is a form of reciprocity that we, in fact, would have to recognize your DBE or ACDBE status with another jurisdiction and offer you the same kind of benefits with us. But the LDBE program, strictly us, that means that we are not really controlled by any outside entities. The rules of the game are within us, and of course, we're opening up the door completely to you. We have no secrets. You'll understand that it's very easy to work with us. Uh, it's easy to be certified with us. But uh, as far as someone coming in from Colorado, uh, who is with the small business program out there, I'm afraid they have to go through the same process. Of course, they would not go to, through the same process that you are. You've already been vetted by your, your um, Department of uh, Small and Local Business Development. You've been vetted, so we accept that, and that's how when why this initiative is very important to you, because we're opening up the doors and welcoming you in without too much of an exercise or, or any stress. I, as I said earlier, I hope I'm a calming effect to you uh, and to let you know that uh, we are welcoming you. But no, no reciprocity. I'm sorry. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is for Mr. Center, I guess, as well. What, thank you for the calming. That was really nice to hear today, that it's an easy process. That's always uh, good to hear. Uh, Shauna Stallworth, Love Brandon Environments, we're furniture dealership in CB dealership in uh, the district. What, once you become, how long does the process take to become certified? So once you send everything in, what's your office's turnaround to, and what's the notification process? Well, if all of you do not uh, submit your applications at once, um, I can almost guarantee you that uh, it's less than 30 days. 
In fact, uh, if you dribble them in one at a time, we may be able to get them back to you in less than two weeks. And then, of course, if you dribble them in and no one follows you behind, days. <laughs> it doesn't take long. You know, there are some jurisdictions and some programs that tell you right off. Uh, it's going to take 90 days in order for them to process you. We're not, we, we do not have that situation with us. So you, when you turn in your application, hopefully we're going to surprise you by having your letter of certification to you within a matter of less than two weeks, hopefully. All right. And if uh, it goes beyond that, uh, lose my number. Uh, <laughs> all right. Sorry, uh, the nice lady reminded me that I didn't say my name. So my name is Rachna Butani. Um, my other question that I have for you is, in your presentation you mentioned um, references. And so I want to understand, do you guys have a specific form that you're looking for? Do you want letters of recommendation from agencies? What are you looking for? Um, that's really um, specific to the requirements that we're asking. But usually your reference will well, probably, we will probably ask you to give us probably three or more references within a time frame and make sure that we have the owner of the project, the, the, the project manager, the dollar value, sometimes we're asking for, and make sure that we have a contact information, whether it's via email. Um, there are certain solicitations that has a reference form to be sent and complete and then return. And, but I think we really like to do our own reference checks. So we will be asking you to identify um, the references in your solicitation. Okay. Hi, my name is Wendell Jackson. I'm representing uh, Fells Mason and Construction. And I have a quick question. And I know you said we have to follow Virginia business license practices, correct? Yes. And that means that we have to be formed, registered in Virginia as a business and get a license in Virginia. Yes. To get to, 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 to get construction work, and you okay. did say your construction. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Yes. And that. we had that website up there, the Department of Professional and Occupational Regulations. So yes. I wanted to make one slight correction. Um, we have that construction management of risk um, solicitation going out for the North Terminal, and um, that is about estimated to be about 300 to 400 million dollars. So that solicitation is being finalized to be advertised. Yes, sir. I just wanted to clarify. So we're a DC business, but we do have um, um, a Virginia builder's license that wouldn't qualify as a a Virginia business. Because if if you got that license through the DPOR, then I would assume that you have a um, Virginia construction license or contractor's license. Yes. Hi, right, good morning. Good morning. Kwame Bailey with Lance Bailey and Associates Architects. Uh, the new streamlined CB, uh, LDBE process, how does that affect people that already have an application in the system and that are CBE? I'm surprised you haven't received your letter already. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll make sure that uh, I remember your name. I have your card, so I'll make sure that it's, it's already out. But no. If you are already um, um, registered as an LDBE, of course, there's no changes whatsoever. Uh, no, I mean, if you have an application in to become uh, an MWAS certified LDBE, now that you're streamlining the system, does that apply to you? Or does your application continue to be old process? Well, we have blinders on, uh, actually. Uh, before this, particular day and before the uh, signing of this agreement, uh, if you have an LDBE application in, we're going to treat you just like um, anyone within the 100 mile radius. But of course, if you bring it to my attention, which you have, uh, I shall look to see what I can do about finding and then let's apply the streamlined process to you to make sure that you have it in, in 
within a certain amount of time, er, earlier time, okay? All right. Anybody else have any special requests? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good morning. Um, my name is Kareen Douglas, and I'm with Capital Site Logistics. We provide materials movement to and from job sites. And I wanted to get a sense of whether or not we would also have to have a contractor's license in Virginia if we are not actually constructing. We're just moving the debris from the job site or moving materials to the job site as work is being conducted. Mm. That's an interesting scenario because <laughs> because if you're moving construction debris, I really don't know how Virginia would treat that. So I would definitely encourage you to get on their website or um, get in touch with someone because you would be physically on a construction site and you're moving construction debris. So my mind tells me you may have to have a contractor's license, but please do confirm that with um, the Virginia Department, okay? Um, there was- I know we have one more question. These heels were made for walking. <laughs> Good morning, thank you very much. My name is Norma Bird and I'm with Business Promotion Consultants. And I think you may have already answered my question. If we already have the CBE certification with DC and we're also certified with you, under the pilot project, is there anything that we need to do or we just, we're okay? Yes, you're, you're more than okay. If you if you are certified with us, uh, um, or if you have your application in, um, we'll, we'll put an asterisk by it and, and say that you also are CBE certified. Those are the, some of the things that we list you know, in our database to make sure that we know who people are and where you're coming from. But uh, we'll make a, a special notation. Um, for all of you here who are CBEs, uh, somehow or another we're going to have to keep accounting of uh, all of your participation, all of your certification, because um, our members of our uh, executive team would like to know at some point how are the CBEs doing. So we'll make a notation there. But you're fine now, all right? Good morning. My name's Luke Brahmi, and I'm with Kelberg Signs. Two questions quickly. Um, with this new relationship, thank you very much for the presentation. It's fantastic. With the new relationships between the DC government, the CBE program, and the LDBE program, if we're already an LBE, is there any added opportunities? But you know, that's from this new relationship. Well, well understand that being registered as an LDBE is just part of the opening of the door for you to come in and to participate with the opportunities. Uh, we don't guarantee anyone anything other than your own efforts to compete. So uh, I would say you have an advantage of those who are not certified. But that is the only advantage that you will have. You'll have to get in here and you'll have to tussle it out with everyone else uh, to get your opportunity and to acquire that opportunity. I wish we could say that we had set asides, but we do not. Uh, this is like a free market, uh, and we are people who believe in laissez-faire, so consequently, get out there and, and do your best effort, and I'm sure that you'll acquire Okay, quickly, question number two, thank you, just wanted to make sure. And question number two is a detailed question. The 100 mile radius, I have a business in South Carolina. I've opened up a satellite office in Vienna with no employees because I want to do business. Is that a legal 100 mile radius? <laughs> I, should, I should tell you that you are not unique that there are other companies who have satellite offices. Uh, one of the things that we require, should we have to do the investigation and inspection, we ask that you have a working office, that you have people working there, that you have things that look like you're doing business, okay? <laughs> and, and that's, you know, that passed the, uh, the smell test. So, um, 
there are a lot of companies that uh, have a, a home offices far, far away, but we, we require them to have a local office and a local presence in order to be considered to be local disadvantaged business enterprises, okay? All right, we do have a few more questions. Sorry, okay, last question. Um, one thing that DC does really well is that if you are not successful with a project, uh, they bring you in and they give you a nice debriefing to allow you to answer questions, ask questions, um, and sort of make your proposal stronger the next time. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about um, what Washington Airports Authority will do if you aren't successful? Do you publish who was successful? Um, do you provide feedback sessions, that kind of thing? Thank oh, you. surely we do. Um, whenever we have an IFB, which is a sealed bid, price only, we do upload um, the pricing schedule online so everyone can see who has been successful because that's public information and we are public entity. When we come to the um, competitive negotiated procurement, you will have to request a debriefing. And we give debriefing all the time. We'll have the technical chairperson there. We'll have, of course, the contracting office, because we really don't want them to say something they shouldn't. But um, we will discuss your proposal. You can ask us questions. And we'll definitely get into some, for lack of a better word, deficiencies that we saw or how the challenges that you may address next time to be more successful. So there's always a debriefing um, process. And I would say that because the IFB is a price only, I mean, if you think that you are not being successful in the IFB process, then sure. I, I spoke to some of the reasons, maybe your estimate. Um, maybe it's about how your organization is structured. You know, there's some people who um, may take less profit just to, to, to get an idea, how, come into MWA how to do business, not saying that you should, but definitely um, we, we engage the contracting community and encourages that so we can really address some of the issues. Because it, it becomes frustrating at times, you know. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, someone actually slipped me a note with a question. Um, it says, hello, MWA. How much, uh, <laughs> how much um, contracting dollars have you spent with LSDBEs in past years? Can you provide us some context in that regard? I think we have how much we have paid vendors, not necessarily specific to the LDB program. Okay. If um, but I think that. we're at the last year spent or the current year spent is about 500 million. I mean, if we just think about it, the CMR is about 350 to 400 million, you know, if you can get a piece of that. And I would encourage you when it gets online to get out and look at our plan holders list. Kathy spoke to that. And make sure that if you want to joint venture or want to subcontract, then you know who the big players are if you are not in that area. And reach out to them and, and, and engage them in discussion about how to use your firm. Great. Well, that, we have time for one last question. Last question um, goes to this sir right here. Uh, thank you. This is a question from a lawyer. Oh, um, my Lord. Do I need a lawyer? <laughs> I, I actually am. Uh, uh, in the context of negotiated uh, yes. uh, solicitations, to those who are unsuccessful, do you consider their submissions to be confidential, particularly in the context of debriefings for the debriefings? Do you consider the, the material submitted by other unsuccessful uh, submitters to be confidential information? Yes, I do. Okay. That's good news. <laughs> yes, I do. And especially for those of you, and, and that's a great question, and I'll be through in a minute. For those of you who submit proposal to us, okay, make sure that anything that you want to remain super confidential, that you're stamping those pages that says confidential. But on a general note, the procurement process does not allow procurement professionals to discuss another proposal with a person that requests in a debriefing. 
okay? And if we're discussing price, we give you a range. My favorite word was that the market was not favorable in your, in, in your instance, you know? So really, but we try to focus on your proposal, um, what we saw in your proposal that caused us to pause or did not move you to the competitive range. So as this young lady say, you can be, get much better in your next submission. Okay. Yes. Yes, just as a follow-up to the um, submitted question. Okay. The 25% LDBE requirement that you referenced earlier, is that across the board? Maybe that will help talk to some of the numbers where there's some of that 500 million. Okay, the, 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 uh, the, when we say 25%, we are applying that to what our estimated value is for the total contract. So if the contract is $100 million, 25% of that $100 million, that's the dollars that we are looking for that will be subcontracted out to LDBs. Is that a requirement on all of your contracts? No, no, not necessarily. It really depends on the scope of work, okay? Yeah, they will let you use the microphone. Um, Jillian, where is Jillian? I, I think the organization has a set yearly goal for um, LDBs as well as for, for services, goods and services and construction contract. I don't know if there's a targeted number for LDBs. And for I FY16. Really, pardon me? For FY16. I think that's what we're trying to figure oh, out. Can you answer that, Jillian? I'm not familiar with that. Targeted goal. Uh, tar oh. Uh, so the uh, uh, forgive me. I, w I was asked a question in the rear, and I was uh, concentrating on that. Could I have your question one more time? The question is, what is the uh, FY16 LSDBE target percentage of the total procurements that you do in FY16? For example. If you do $500 million in procurements, is there a target number that you negotiate with the board or however that works that you're trying to do with LSDBEs throughout the 100-mile radius that you mentioned? Well, it's my understanding that 25% uh, of, um, of the uh, contracts and opportunities are going to be assigned to construction and design. Uh, there's another 20% that is going to be looked for for goods and services. So 20% and 25%, those are our goals that we're working with. Now, if we exceed them, we're, we're very happy. But we're, at least we have set a target of 25% construction and design, 20% for goods and supplies. How's that? Excuse me? Well, my, my vice president over here is saying yes, and uh, uh, I am certainly not going to disagree with him. Wonderful. So that wraps up our Q&A session. Thank you, guys. And before we move into the ceremonial signing, um, we did have a couple of announcements um, that we wanted to do, especially with our Procurement Technical Assistance Center with the program manager, uh, Milton Goodman. So he'll just take a brief minute to share some information with you all. Please do not leave, do not leave. And um, here's Milton. Good morning, everyone. Again, Milton Goodman with the DC Procurement Technical Assistance Center. We are hosted by the Department of Small and Local Business Development. And for those of you who don't know about the PTAC, that's their acronym, um, we are in fact a national uh, service provider funded by the Department of Defense where we render advisory services to small and mid-sized businesses that are looking to do business with either the federal government or the state and local government. And in this particular case, is the DC government. Now, this is a very exciting moment with respect to this collaboration between MWA and DSLBD, simply because once you've gotten your certifications out of the way, you're certified, you're in position to do business, the PTAC can assist you in becoming procurement ready. And what that actually means is that oftentimes 
you may not have all detailed information regarding procurements that you want to pursue. You see them via forecast. You also know exactly from your perspective how you like very much to pursue the effort. Well, the DCP TAC can help you navigate through the actual procurement process, work with you with regards to the current status of your company, and when it comes to a specific procurement, we can sit down and counsel and talk with you with related subject matter and see whether or not you have some voids in your strategy. So we'd like very much for you to be perfectly aware of the services that we provide. Now, by the way, this is a funded entity from the Department of Defense. And the reality of it is, with this collaboration of MWAR and DSLBD, you now have access to this advisory service arm. We have counselors that are standing ready to support you in specific efforts, areas of concentration that you're going to bring to us. Obviously, you're not going to come cold because either you are a business who's been around for some time and you have a plan, or you could very well be a startup company. Okay, that startup company, realistically, you should have a plan. And if you don't, you can still come to us. We will meet you exactly where you are and handhold you through this particular process. Navigating through a procurement element with regards to the various agencies in the District of Columbia sometimes can be a bit cumbersome. And if you are interested in doing business on the federal side of the house, the federal government, well, you know exactly how that more or less will work. We work with you with respect to ex expeditious procurement vehicles, like hub zone certs, like 8A certs, like GSA schedules, things along that, that, that particular line. We will work with you in understanding what the missions are relative to the agencies that you like very much to pursue. But most of all, we are going to take a firm assessment of your company to see exactly where you are with your talents and your core competencies and ensure that you are ready from a procurement perspective to pursue the efforts that you bring to us. So we, we want to make sure that you are aware of this service. It is indeed services that are being honored via your tax dollars. Oftentimes, on monthly basis, we have outreach sessions, we have training sessions, we have seminars that you can take advantage of, and these sessions, though they are very much so in tune from a standpoint of understanding various uh, talents and understanding various skill sets and doing business, for all practical purposes, if you go elsewhere, you're going to have to pay a fee for these services. In the District of Columbia, these services are at no cost to you. So you can attend our sessions, you can attend our outreach sessions, our briefings, our training um, sessions and tutorials. We welcome the opportunity to support you. And we want to make sure that you have all of the tools that you need in order to pursue the work, should you be qualified. We thank you very much. Our table is right in the back. I have one counselor that's there, but we have three and one coming when it comes to people on staff. So we welcome the opportunity to support you. Thank you very much. Today is a very, very, very exciting occasion. I am excited, and I don't even have to fill out the forms. You should be really, really, really excited about what we're doing today. So driving economic development, is, 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 it has been and it will continue to be a top priority for Mayor Bowser. Her aim is to diversify the district's economy and to create a supportive ecosystem to boost innovative, uh, innovative small businesses like yours. And that is why we're here today. We want to make sure that we do everything we can and everything we can to give you the tools you have to succeed. And today, I think you have heard uh, a little bit of, uh, of the opportunities that are coming up. But today, we're launching the Joint Certification Program with the Metropolitan Washington uh, Airport Authority. And as you heard this morning, the opportunities with MWA are pretty, pretty huge. And I, by the way, I just want to thank uh, the, the people that presented this morning, Terry, Gutman, Lisbeth, and Julian. Thank you so much for all the very detailed information that you provided this, uh, this morning. So I could speak here for hours, but just let's get this done. Uh, 
which is what we want to do, right? Small business, we want to get it done and want to get it done quickly. So now I want to introduce a person who, since I've met her, has truly demonstrated the commitment, passion, and enthusiasm for small businesses. I just want to introduce you to Mayor Muriel Bowser. Well, good morning, everybody. I am really happy uh, to be here, and I'm happy to see all of you here. And I know we're all excited to talk about opportunities, right? Um, because that's, that's, that's the name of the game when you're a small business. Small businesses tell me all the time, we don't want anything special. We just want the system to work and we want it to be fair and we want our fair share um, because we're committed to the city, we're committed to hiring DC residents and helping us achieve what we all want. And that's for people who work hard and play by the rules um, to be, ha be able to have a good life right here in Washington, DC. Uh, and it's always good to have um, partners when you do that. Uh, so the city can do a lot, and we are a $13 billion entity these days that serves 660,000 uh, Washingtonians. We have a, a significant amount of procurements that we do. I think you are all going to be very happy uh, in the coming weeks or, or months when we get it exactly right, uh, when we are able to publish uh, our procurement plan, so our acquisition plan. Um, the government has done it previously, and it's been so hard to decipher that I think it hasn't been helpful. Uh, but we're going to change all of that so that it is helpful. Um, so we're working with our chief procurement officer, and we're working with Anna's uh, office so that you know exactly what each agency is planning to do um, in, the, in the upcoming year. So imagine leveraging uh, our procurement power with the procurement uh, plan that the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority has. And it's pretty significant. And it's important, too. Um, I just got back from a trip uh, where I represented the city in London uh, with uh, mayors from around the world. And you'd be surprised, Jack. It's good. Maybe you won't. Uh, maybe you do this, too. I really pay close attention to all the airports. And I want to see how ours matches up. And it's important um, that we compete on, on that global scale, that when people come to Washington, uh, when they, any of our airports, that they say, OK, we're coming into a real global city. Uh, and that airport is their first impression their first impression. That's why it's it's so important. Uh, so let me acknowledge uh, that uh, we have, and we will be seated shortly, uh, with the president and CEO of the Airports Authority, um, John Potter. Let's give him a, a, a wave and a round of applause. I probably shouldn't have shortened your name, given that I just met you, but I, I like Jax, too. So, uh, Mr. Potter. Uh, and also, uh, we have been joined, it looks like, by two of our DC board members and uh, the vice chairman, Warner Session. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and Thorne Posen, give him a round. Are there other board members here? Oh, there's Jocelyn. Hi, Jocelyn. Give Jocelyn Williams a round of applause. And I don't know if there are any uh, members from the other jurisdictions. Well, we, we like them too, so give them a round of applause. And you've already heard um, from Anna Harvey, uh, and we've uh, given Anna a big agenda. And I'm glad it wasn't long that I met with our board members and encouraged them to forge a, a new partnership. And look at us, here we are. So good work, uh, and good work, Anna. We, we appreciate all the work that you're doing. Uh, and you, you may have met uh, Deputy Mayor Courtney Snowden, who's responsible for the Department of Greater Economic Opportunity. And some people might say, well, what is that? Uh, that's to say, how can more people participate in the prosperity that is Washington? Um, and so uh, Courtney and her team are working on employment opportunities, working with our WIC, um, but also working with our Department of Small and Local Businesses, which is, is so important. Uh, so how, how are we going to do all of this? Uh, when the board members came uh, to give me a briefing about what was going on at MWA, they told me about uh, all of the capital improvement plans. And I'm 100% behind them for the reasons that I've already stated. We have to keep up on a global stage. And how, what our airports do is very important. Uh, now, the airports are technically not in Washington. 
technically, a small technicality. Uh, but it is, they, they serve um, our city, our residents, visitors, and our business community, and that's why um, our members of the board keep very focused on uh, what Washington needs, too. So with all of that capital uh, investment, you'll hear um, from John in, in a minute, about $200 million a year from the airport's authority alone, that creates jobs and that creates opportunities for our businesses. We're also invested in getting out to all of the airports with the Silver Line, uh, and the district is a equal partner in that investment. And so with the, the Silver, Silver Line, uh, we know that we can have more and more Washingtonians access the corridors that serve um, our airports, uh, which we are going to stay focused on as well. And so we will continue to build on these partnerships. This is a real pledge, and I, I am grateful um, that our board members and that all the staff at the Airports Authority uh, take it very seriously. Uh, and we will look for ways to publish uh, what's available and point people to what's available in terms of the upcoming projects course in DC government, um, but in all of the, the entities that we work with, including uh, the airport's uh, authority. Uh, so I have our pledge here, and let me just share with you a few lines from the pledge. Um, it says, whereas the government of the District of Columbia and MWA are committed to working together in an effort uh, to increase the number of DC-based small businesses that are participating in MWA contracting opportunities and securing MWA contracts, and whereas the government government of the District of Columbia is committed to strengthening the ability of DC-based small businesses to success successfully compete in public procurement processes. And whereas the government of the District of Columbia and NWA recognize that the sustainability of DC-based businesses will be significantly enhanced if these businesses have access to a broad range of public procurement and capacity building opportunities. And therefore, the government of the District of Columbia and MWA commit to work cooperatively to develop and promote, promote joint programs and activities designed to provide DC-based small businesses with regular access to information, uh, with notice of capacity building opportunities, as well as information regarding the opportunity to obtain certificate, certification in MWA programs. Let me pause on that, too, uh, because what uh, Mr. Potter and uh, Anna and I discussed before we came in is a, a key time savings for your business. Once Anna certifies you as a CBE, you don't have to do it all over again at MWA. And that is a big deal. So with that, let me recognize uh, MWA's uh, president and CEO for a few remarks. And then, Warner, I would like you to represent the board members with a few remarks. Well, good morning, everybody. And I, first of all, I want to I thank uh, you all who have participated today, both you in the crowd as well as the staff from MWA and the folks from, uh, from the District of Columbia and your government. It's been a, a, a great partnership that I think we're forming. This is an exciting day for the Airports Authority as we formally commit to enhancing the relationship with the District of Columbia to further our economic ties through outreach efforts that facilitate district companies' participation in Airports Authority contracting opportunities. We're delighted that so many district businesses and interested uh, parties uh, are actively engaged in, in seeking work with the airports authority. The airports are key drivers of the metropolitan area's economy, both in the District of Columbia and across the national capital region. Together, the airports authority, with the airlines that serve our airports, the owners and operators of airport concessions, our goods and services contractors, and the government agencies based at the airports employ more than 25,000 people and generate more than $17 billion a year in economic activity for the region and offer hundreds of millions of dollars worth of contracting opportunities. Yes, some of those opportunities and a good portion are for small businesses. For all of the airports authority, it makes good business sense that we optimize the number of local companies that help serve the traveling public. So we're doing this in our best interest. Why? The more companies that participate, 
the better the competition. The more the competition, the better quality of service we get, and hopefully a very competitive price. And when we get good prices, that's the lower price that we charge the airlines. And if we charge the airlines lower prices, we hope, now we hope, that they'll charge <laughs> the traveling public less. We can't assure that, but we hope that they do that. And then the more attractive our airports are to the traveling public. Because as the mayor said, we want to be world class, we want to attract folks. Also, use of local companies means that when folks land, they know that they're in the District of Columbia. They get the sense they're in the nation's capital. Why? Because they see the stores. They see the shops. They see the restaurants. And they say, here I am. I'm in the nation's capital. And then when local companies get work at the airports, dollars flow into the local economy. And what does that mean? That means the economy's stronger. What does that mean? That means that there's more discretionary dollars locally. What does that mean? You all want to travel. You go buy tickets, okay? So this is kind of circular. Yes. I don't want you to think that we're sitting here trying to you know, be uh, you know, gracious. We're, we're self-interest. We want you to work for us. We want you to earn money. We want you to spend money in the district. We want this economy to grow, and we want people to have a lot of money so they can go traveling and, and you know, spend it at the airports. And the more you spend at our airports, the nicer we can make the airports. Foreign people can see it. You get the message? So we hope today's program's gotten you excited and open your eyes to potential airport opportunities for you and for your companies. Please know that we're doing everything we can to streamline the certification process, and I think the step we took today is exciting. It's one form that you have to fill out. We're not saying it's perfect. You know, we want to make sure that there's an easy transition from CBE over to our program. And by the way, the small, more small businesses that sign up the more small business opportunities exist because we have to create a competitive environment. And if we're going to have a small business you know, portion of our uh, contracting process, we have to have participants. You know, there are no set-asides. We want competition. So we need folks to be there. And so we want as robust a list as we possibly can. So as you heard many times today, the Airports Authority is committed to op op optimizing the number of opportunities for local, small, minority, and women-owned businesses in our contracting process, for companies in the District of Columbia and the entire metropolitan area. So, Mayor, thank you very much for joining us today, and thank you and your staff for working so closely with us as we try to achieve our goals. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Warner Session, uh, Warner, you, I think you are like a veteran on the board, uh, and it's, it's a good for us um, because we know you know the small business community and district very well, um, and you have been an excellent uh, representative of our interest in so many ways in uh, contributing to us having world-class airports, and we're very proud of you. And please join us at the podium to give remarks. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Uh, one thing I can say about this mayor, she came in saying, we're going to go further faster. And she has done that by uh, appointing key people to key positions, uh, one of whom is Anna Harvey, who herself was a small business owner. So she understands. Courtney Snowden, who, who's responsible for greater economic opportunity east of the river. So we're going further faster. And part of this further faster is engaging um, this enterprise we call the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. Uh, we operate Dulles and National, as you know. We operate the Dulles Toll Road. We're managing uh, construction of the three billion plus Silver Line. Uh, we do a lot of things that um, many district businesses, quite frankly, are not aware of. So we, we really, really, really encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity. And we want to say that this is just not a, a, a flash in the pan. These discussions actually started about eight months ago between DSLBD and the MWA staff, uh, Terry Woodson, our procurement people, Steve Baker, uh, Gautam Kunta, and our chief revenue officer, uh, Jerome Davis. And our intent is to make this systematic and engaging and ongoing. We're not simply doing a ceremonial event and then walk away. We wanted this to be continuous. Uh, we actually 
advertise our procurements a, a, a quarter in advance. We have a quarterly forecast, so you can look at it ahead of time and begin to organize your resources to take advantage of some of the things that we do. So again, I encourage you to, um, to look in the direction of the Airports Authority, and I would point out to Mayor Bowser the official address at Reagan National is One Aviation Circle, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Uh, and finally, let me again acknowledge my colleagues, uh, Jocelyn Williams and uh, Thorne Posen, and please take, take an opportunity to meet them after the event is over. 